Christians point to the story of Joseph, how he was sold by his brothers to slavery in Egypt, how he suffered in slavery, how eventually he rose to being a king, a viceroy in Egypt, and ruling over the Egyptian people, and ultimately being recognized by his brothers as sort of a symbolic parallel to the story of Jesus. They see the brothers selling Joseph into slavery as the Jewish rejection of Jesus. They see the Egyptian acceptance of Joseph as if this would be the Gentile acceptance of Jesus. And they see Joseph's ultimate reconciliation with his brothers as that end-time prophecy which the Christians believe one day the Jewish people will embrace Jesus. God forbid. But what is the Jewish perspective on this? How do the Jewish people see the story of Joseph? How do we see it played out in the history of mankind? What symbolism do we see in that story? What lessons can we draw from the story? We understand that Joseph represents a concept. He represents a concept which many religious people ridicule. And that concept is that man's actions are pleasing to God. All of man's actions are pleasing to God. Of course, not evil actions. But when I say all of man's actions, not necessarily what we would consider religious actions, such as praying or directly observing God's commandments. But actions such as building your society, building roads, setting up, providing for your family. We see those actions as godly actions. And the very notion of human action being pleasing to God is ridiculed by many religious people, and specifically by Christianity, as arrogant, as leading to pride, as distancing oneself from God. Christians say, how is it possible that people's actions, human actions, human action is so filthy, it's so worthless, how could God accept the actions of sinful people? But Joseph represents the concept that no, man could stand in a relationship to God, could stand confidently in a relationship with God, and do what a man is supposed to do in society, live like a normal person in society, and that is godliness. Now, if you look at the history of the world, since for the past 2,000 years, we see that originally the church was very strong and influenced the minds of people to denigrate the actions of men, to look down at the actions of men. The Greeks developed wisdom and they developed various ideas, sciences, but with the rise of the church, these ideas fell into oblivion. Education was looked down upon, and the world fell into the dark ages. This went on for a long time, until people started realizing that, no, we could, with our actions, we could make a better world. Our actions are not so dirty, our actions are not so filthy, and our actions are not so godless. And with the Renaissance, with the Reformation of the Protestant Church, people started realizing we could do things on our own, using our minds, using our creativity, and we can build a better world. And that is the Joseph concept being accepted on a secular level. And the world has become a better place because this concept has come out to the forefront, because people realize the truth of this concept is that human action could be pleasing to God and could be building a better world. But the world still did not realize that on a religious level, on a level of relationship to God, that human action is where it all happens. That a human being obeying God's commandments to human abilities, imperfectly, is where our relationship to God stands. But that's a notion that will, will come about, that's a, a concept that the world will accept in the time of the Messiah. In the Messianic age, the world will, reconciled, will be reconciled with that concept, how man's actions not only can make the world a better place on a secular level, but rather it can make it, it, can make it a better place on a religious level. It could bring the world to, to be unified in relating to God. So this then would be the parallel, the symbolism of the Joseph story. Joseph being sold into slavery would parallel the concept of the religious leadership or the leadership of mankind as a whole throwing away the concept of man's actions being pleasing to God. And Joseph rising to power in Egypt will be parallel to the rise of the Renaissance of people's appreciation for the goodness and the godliness of man's actions on a secular level. And Joseph's reconciliation with his brothers would be parallel to when the world on a religious level will realize the centrality of the goodness of our actions, the godliness of our actions, and how God favors our actions.